Okay, we've just completed our learning game of Fields of Despair. It's a block war game by GMT. Myself and uh, Arthur, who was playing the Central Powers. I was playing the French and the the BEF. Was it the BEF then? Yeah. yeah. Yes, there they are. They made an appearance along with the uh, good allies of the Belgians. We were also joined by David Kershaw, a real war game designer, which is very cool. So this you first, David. You didn't really participate, but you just sat and, and watched. Yes, I was a neutral observer. A neutral observer. What did you think? Well, oh, like goods and bads. I really like the look of it, actually. It looks quite nice the way all the blocks are set up. And I think I've really played many block games except for the Pilgrim's Triumph. Um, this is a little bit different in the rotating of the blocks. I can see that maybe being a bit fiddly with the breaking of them down. And particularly, one thing I did notice in combat whenever you took losses. It might be strategically better to perhaps take a certain number from each block, but for the convenience of playing, you might just take them all off one block, even though that's not necessarily the right decision. But uh, I did like it. I like the way it handles the artillery. The artillery is handled through a kind of a bidding system where you take in turns to place artillery counters on. So you, you've got to think about where you're going to put them, where you're going to use them up, and because you're taking turns, you're watching your opponent doing it. So it makes it uh, a little bit sort of cagey when you're doing that. I'll just show you the uh, artillery. Sorry, David. I'll just show you the artillery token. So there we go. There's artillery. The big Bertha, who did a lot of damage in my fortresses. Yes, big Bertha's good because it uh, hits on a five-six against fortresses, whereas everything else normally hits on a six against fortresses. That's so right. it does quite a lot of damage. That's right. Anything else, uh, Dave? The fortresses are good at slowing people down, that's for sure, because they make it extremely difficult to attack. Yeah. Because anything in the fortress hex is hit on a 6 instead that's of right. a 5 bog, six. It'll bog the Germans down, yeah. So it effectively halves you against them, doesn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah, yeah. It's key. Once, once they're gone, I can see it being yeah. really tough for the French unless they've got their reinforcements up. Yeah. And I left a couple of fortress hexes without any troops in it, which is more or less suicide. You have to, you know, that you wouldn't just, you wouldn't do that. Yeah, the key thing about leaving your fortress um, hexes without any troops in them is you just don't get the uh, second round of fire from your infantry, which would be very good because again, you're hitting on a five, six, and they're only hitting on a six if you're defending the fortress. That's right. Hex. That's right. You're losing them. That's right. Yeah. You see, this one, this one here is held out for three whole turns. Is it? Just Where is that? Good. That's the BEF. Yeah. Uh, oh yes, to yes, totally yes. Not quite totally surrounded. You. We managed to get them uh, some sort of supply. Yeah, that's, that's contested. Would that affect no, supply? supply is okay through contested areas. Oh, is it? Yes, okay. friendly contested, mind you. Mm. Okay. Yeah, the supply rules seem quite not quite as severe as I thought they would be. No. They really just seem to reduce. They would do. They reduce your movement by one. So infantry go down for two to one, cavalry go down for three to two, and also combat's half. So is you're that just an attack or in defence? Uh, both. Oh, okay. What I like about the game is I love the way this front is done through the uh, abstraction of uh, drawing cubes. I love the way you do initiative, where basically you bid and you go um, one, two, three, and reveal the number of cubes you have to see who gains initiative. And initiative is really important uh, in this game. I was playing the uh, Allies here, and you know, early doors you need to win the initiative because if the Germans get the initiative, they're going to blow holes right through you. Um, the naval warfare, we really didn't participate much in this because it's so early uh, in the war that it didn't really affect things too much. But I can see if you're playing the full campaign, how that would be would be really, really uh, interesting. Um, overall, I really like this game. And uh, the only thing that the only thing bothered Arthur, bothered, bothered me, buckets of dice. I'm not a huge fan of buckets of dice. Um, but we've, co we've covered that one, and they've got a table where you just throw three dice and you cross-reference to get the result. So Arthur can do his bucket of dice and I can do me table and everyone's happy. Arthur, <laughs> what did you think? Oh, uh, yes, an enjoyable game. Uh, we spent a, a fair bit of time trying to learn as uh, expected. Um, the fortress in Long Alsace Lorraine is very hard for the Germans. Unfortunately, the French left some of the fortresses empty of infantry anyway. So they would see two, that's happened yeah. there and there and potentially there as well. Yeah. Two of them were taking, which was uh, don't worry, 
All generals have been sacked who have been involved in this calamity. Have you? <laughs> you. So, uh, that was uh, very nice. I don't think that will happen in the future. Up in Belgium and around uh, the Ardennes, the, um, the British Expeditionary Force were now trying to get surrounded. That was very tough because I hit a fortress that was man and it, it don't do it, don't go near them. They're very hard and obviously you've got a, a bit of battling back and forth. I took the two ports, another mistake by our allies, <laughs> the allies, <laughs> which I think won't happen again. Uh, the, I think you feel, as a German, you feel stretched. I, I don't think I get away with this quite the same way. Uh, again, there's a lot to learn. Yeah, and a lot to be thinking about. Yeah, and we, with the joy for me as well is that we've learned another system. We know the rules. Now we can get stuck in and learn the strategy. Uh, that's the that's the key. Really, really good. The way this game works, there's an, I think there's nine scenarios, so you can play them individually, or you can keep continuing on and play the full campaign, which would be wonderful. I lucky enough, I have room in the house where I can leave this set up, so we can just play it over a year and we get the whole campaign play it off it'd be really 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 good uh, doing doing that there but the in terms of the components it's absolutely gorgeous the maps hard board beautiful blocks really good thick uh, card components so overall I would have to say uh, very good but GMT does this sort of thing really really well any wrap up Arthur what's your you know, final the, the visually is very pleasant I found the blocks they're smaller than used to but I found them quite adequate yeah, it'd be great to fight the whole First World War and yeah. take Paris. No bother. <laughs> Dave, any wrap up? Uh, yeah, this is obviously 1914, so there's a lot more movement and a lot yeah. more going on, so it's probably the more exciting part of the war. I don't know how it would continue after this. Combat does seem quite bloody to some. If you've got 20 points going in against 20, you're going to lose 7 hit on average, aren't you? You're hitting on 5 sixes. On that point, that's another element which we didn't get involved in here. There's tech development as well, where you can develop your technology in terms of gas uh, and show, gas masks. Did you show this thing? You didn't show that, I don't think. Yeah, of course they did. That's a good point. This here is basically your player map where you control all of your artillery, air force, tech trees here, your logistic points is up there, and your supply capacity. Uh, brilliant. Really, really good fun. And uh, a great way to finish KuCon with a great war game. And I've made it home safely after three days in KuCon and all the gaming delights that it offered. Uh, a bit tired. Um, glad to be out of the noise in some of the, the gaming rooms uh, back into the countryside here. Um, it was a great weekend. Good to play games with uh, Rob and David, with Al, with Arthur. Uh, we played uh, a couple of uh, new and exciting games, Fields of Despair and Maria. Uh, look forward to getting stuck into those uh, over the next uh, month or so and testing out the strategies etc. Uh, the staff, it has to be said, were excellent at QCon as always. Um, I look forward to next year and more of the same. Oh and I should mention Bray was two games up on me over the three day event. I should do this because he would kill me if I don't give him due recognition. So, fair play to him. Boo. Hiss. And I shall have my revenge next year. <laughs>